lot to have nice nails for this conference, but uh, it's harder to plug in stuff, you'll see. And also, I don't think we're going to go to Mars if we are not fixing first this kind of installation issue. So we are safe here on Earth, right? So yeah, who is this? Uh, how is her name even? Yeah, I'm not Luana, I'm not Yona. I don't mind also. But uh, if you are going to call me Luana, I do expect some tickets to Hawaii to embrace my Hawaiian spirit. So be careful around that. I'm an engineer manager at Interledger Foundation. And you also meet us probably downstairs at the booth. We are a nonprofit that tries to push their payments, open payments, micro payments. We'll discuss a bit more about it. The mission of it all my career was to push for inclusion, in this case, financial inclusion, and also through the power of the web. As you can see, I'm there from the beginning with Mozilla, with Cosmbox, and pushing it to standards within the European Commission and several conferences that, besides Cascadia, I do recommend you to join us there. But I do want to see more about yourself. Who in the audience know what 404 error is? Because we are talking about standards. Yes, yes. Probably more. I think there's also a running joke around. Other 204. Hmm. No. Oh, OK. Don't spoil the next one, OK? What is 418, though? Who knows it? Oh, Ooh, two. I should go home. Three, four. Oh. Yeah, I was like, sorry, Joanna. OK, OK. It's a April's joke error. And it is standardized, and it is on MDN. I also put there the link. So I am not joking around, but uh, it is one of my favorites. Don't worry if you didn't know. It's only like 61 documented on Mozilla Developer Network on NDM, and there are a lot of separation there, the categories of the errors. And because I know that I'm standing between you and your lunch, and people are hungry most of the times, I decided to do a very short talk. If you know what this error is, we go all go home now to it. 402. Don't spoil those that came at the boot. Don't spoil the secret. So a too long didn't read version of my talk is that we should have a 402 payment required error at standard, as standard error. At this moment in time, it is documented on MDN, but you will see there that it's just a reserved number for a future implementation. I guess you might know why we don't have payments standardized, because of course there are too many people involved. But why I'm here to talk about what solutions, well, what problems we see and what solution we figure out. Everyone wants to do more money, and it's not a greenness. And if you know the topic, it's like money, money, money. Yes. But uh, with different implementation there online, we thought that we should figure out to do one standardized. And most of the times when we talk about getting payment for publishers or for people that use online stuff, First solution that came in mind, it's ads. And we are not against ads, don't get me wrong. Uh, but yes, I would like to read my newsletter. I'm from Berlin, Germany. Uh, I'm Romanian at best, but I live in Berlin. I would love to be able to read the news without that green stuff. It's literally the screenshot from yesterday. But in the same time, I am supporting the platform creators and uh, not having to install an extension. Well, we are not quite there yet. Uh, but I'll spoil the tea in a bit how, where we are standing with this. Other payment issues that we saw was that not all websites are considered worthy. At this moment in time, if you don't have like hundreds or maybe thousands of users, you will not be able to take advantage of ads. Nobody will look of giving you money for promotion over there. And maybe you have five users that you are changing their life to them, but it doesn't matter. They are just five. In the ads world, it's just five as a number. Other issues would be that not all countries are equal. There are a lot of platforms these days trying to figure out the gap between a user and the creator or maybe a publisher, like Patreon, like Buy Me A Coffee. Again, no hate to them. We love them and we use them daily. They are just third-party issues. But in case, for example, of Patreon, you cannot create from India, but you can pay from India. So you cannot add a Patreon to your bank account in India as to receive money, but your card can work to pay others who more, which for me doesn't quite feel like fairness today. Or ne never, but uh, in general, not cool situation to be around. And not everyone is rich. As you know, many of the companies like banks or services will require you at least around five uh, US dollars or euros or pebbles. A certain amount of money is required to 
be transferable. Uh, especially banks will not look, will not permit to send less than that amount because it's not in their interest to do. It will be more costly for them to send it than to receive a part of it. So what are we proposing then to fix this issue? Well, web monetization. And it's an API that enables pages to receive payments from users with minimal interaction. And those users should be web monetized uh, visitors. At this moment in time, we have a proposal with the W3C. Does everyone know what W3C is? Y yes. It's the consortium that stabilized, defines how the internet works, the standards that are out there. It's a group of experts. I would say sometimes, yes, there could be company representative or could be invited experts that meet in different topics and they decide for the future. I've been to many of those calls, and we literally see the debate like how add-ons should look or how, you know, links should look. And I was like, OK, so these people define that? So yeah, we have a, a standard uh, proposal with them in draft. We think, I think we started around two, three years ago. It takes time. It is public. And I think it's a good disclaimer to say by the beginning that everything we do, it's open source, and you can check it out and contribute. We are going to be with them at TPAC to present also the stage of open payments. And we are working together with other entities from payments group to make it a standard for everyone. We do have now a browser extension. I know we kind of all hate extensions because you know every time you have a bug, you have to check it with a clean profile. And no one in this world has a clean profile on their browser. So yes, but it's a chicken and the egg situation. So if we don't have user, we don't see the power of the standard there will be no standard. If there is no standard, people will not trust an add-on. There will be no user. So we are trying to move on all three uh, in the same time. And like always, that's not the fastest way to do stuff. At this moment in time, we do have the extension, not mine. It's not, I'm not judging. It's uh, available on the major browsers. And probably if it works on Chrome, you will see it in other browsers too that are based on Chromium. And you see their native support browser. We are not doing this independently. We do work with Chromium team to implement it in browser. Because if it will be implemented by default in your browser, it will be a setting. Whenever you start a session, you will add, like you add your sync account or import your bookmarks, you will add the preference for payment pointers. And then it's easy as that. You don't have to use it anymore. And it's more trustful. You don't have to install apps. It will not create a lot of other dependencies on that. You can try it right now for this three browser, and even more, you can build it up from GitHub if you're feeling like it's not there. And uh, don't worry, you can also come downstairs at the boot and check it out, or literally search web monetization in Interledger Foundation, and you will be able to do it. Test it out. We do have a test network account, so you don't have to use real money. If you want to use it with real money and the digital wallets that already support us, Send me an email, and I'll be more than happy to give you a present to test uh, on that one. OK, what do you need to know a bit about web monetization? Web monetization is built on top of open payments, the work of Interledger Foundation. And maybe it's a good disclaimer now to say that we are not owning web monetization. We are a bit more the stewards, the drivers of it. Because it is a proposed standard, everything is in public. We are just supporting with paid engineering work, but the web monetization, all work, standard pages are not only of Interledger Foundation. We are the main player because we are putting the effort to build it up, but anyone can join and contribute. Anyone can be part of the larger team of it. How you enable the web monetization? It's as simple as adding a HTML link on your website. If you're owning the platform, like a blog or a product that you build, it's easy just to create your own um, tag and add it there. With the major player, which are in closed platforms, um, I would say maybe YouTube, there will be a negotiation with uh, YouTube people to add it in the backbone of the platform, because a user cannot modify that for them. And in ca this case, at the moment, learn how to use the web extension. So what is Open Payments, the backbone of the web monetization? It's an API standard that uh, allows third parties to connect security, connect securely between accessing digital wallets, send out payments, view account information, and uh, challenge or um, work with the grants for payments. You, at this moment in time, we are not including in open payments like 
requesting to see your balance. Nobody will be able to request the balance of the receiver, neither of the sender. But you initiate a grant, and I'll show you in a second, that will be sending the money between. This is the major scheme of how open payments work. There are the user, uh, a wallet or a user would be Sabine. She wants to send money to Broke on the website and their wallets connect through the protocol and send the money. What is a web monetization agent, like we discussed, would be either the browser extension at this moment in time or in the future the implementation in the native browser. How you can configure it, easy to set up a wallet. It could be one or multiple wallets. At the moment in time, I think we have like three or four that support us, uh, and you can try it on. You can set up the currency that you want, the amount of the money that you send, and the time limit for sending the money. If you're setting, in like this an example, maybe two euros per hour, if someone closes the window at 59 minutes, they were not going to lose it. It's sending a lot of micropayments for those 59 minutes, and it's, we talk about seconds multitude. And you can decide who to support or some pages to block list, because we do want to um, enhance your values uh, and not pay something else. We are not leaving you alone in this. We did create a lot of publisher tools, and I give you now a sneak peek. On the right side is the new interface. We are do changing our clothes a bit, make it a bit more nice. And on the left side, we can see now that we have a banner generator, a link generator, and a revenue uh, share, and a playground for you to check web monetization again without losing real money or not investing real money in it. As I mentioned, the right side is how this page will look in around two weeks, I think, where we're going to have the launch for it. This is how the code looks behind it. It is, like you see, a simple grant request. They will check how much is sent in what currency, and the incumbent uh, URL payment um, of the receiver. I think it's a good opportunity to also mention you that our motto is sending money as easy as an email, because while writing an email and you send it to me, you don't know how I look, you don't know where I am in the world, you don't know if I speak the language that you write me or if I use the same font or the same client platform. I could be on Gmail, you could be on Outlook. Our emails still work without many data. So we will implement the payments. If you give me a URL type of um, pay pointer, I will be able to send you money without knowing shift account of banks, which bank, which currency, any other details that are not relevant. So let's see how open payment and web monetization interact. We request the grant and create the incoming payment from Brock's wallet. We check that we have the address from the other payment, and we do have the requested amount of money. And then between the wallets, we'll transfer the money between themselves. And um, it will return a validation grant approval, and uh, everything will officially work, or, or hopefully work. I mentioned that there is a transfer. The transfer is done with the Interledger protocol. And um, this is just a, a sending pocket, a really small amount of money across different pl platform networks. I see their network or ledger, and I did mention, mention to some of you uh, in the booth that I know Interledger kind of triggers people and send us that, oh, crypto, oh, wow. No, we are not. I'm sorry. I mean, I should have started at the beginning if you're here for a crypto talk. I'm sorry, it's not. Um, crypto or any cryptocurrency could be one of the currency that you uh, send. It depends on you. could be real money or crypto money. And in the same time, for April's full, I made pebbles and eggs. I'm sorry if it uh, still hurts, because I heard in the US in April, eggs were higher than gold in a bit. We tried to support you, and we were sending protein eggs to people just for April full day. So the currency doesn't matter. It could be a Bitcoin or not. could be crypto or not. The ledgers that we have also in our name are representative entities, banks, digital wallets, financial services, and we are connecting this ledger, therefore our name. Sometimes might not be the best one, but we are working with what we have, you know. So let's look on the transfer side, sending the little pockets, and what Interledger protocol is. And I know I said Interledger or not Internet protocol, but who here, I mean, I hope everyone is familiar with the Internet protocol. Does it look familiar for you? 
And don't worry if you don't, because that's also the power of the web, because if it's not familiar for you, this is the backbone of the uh, internet protocol. And if you don't know it, it means that it's so safe, so stable, that you don't really need to know this day. You just use it easier, trusting the internet. So the in <laughs> interledger protocol was literally built on the similar similarities between the internet and uh, payments. We thought that, OK, if we use the internet protocol of sending information, bits of information between two entities that don't know each other through a way secure, uh, based on uh, minimal information exchange, why not try with payments? So you will see there the level of network, which in the internet case is the Wi-Fi, the Ethernet, the Bluetooth, the system, and that. In our case, is fiat, crypto, mobile money. This, for those not familiar with the finance systems, are entities of financial. Like mobile money is the credit that you have on your phone, and you can pay with it a different situation. For example, back in Romania, where I'm from, you can take a bus ticket with your credit by sending an SMS. It's very popular in many countries. I think maybe in many countries in Africa, they send money between the same by the mobile phone directly. So different ways of uh, transfers. Fiat, it's uh, the entity that controls all the money, real money. And crypto, again, we, I think we know it. The protocol in the internet case is the IP. The internet protocol in our case will be ILP, Interledger Protocol. Then we have the TCP, UDP uh, for the transportation of the data. In our case, there are streams. And on top is the URL base that you all know, the HTTP uh, or different other type of it that we define how we transfer the data. In our case, it's uh, open payment. Where is web monetization in this picture? It's on top of it, a wrap up. And as I mentioned, most of the times, you will not need to know anything that is behind it. Because besides using the HTTP, while you browse the internet, you don't figure out who, what is doing, what is Wi-Fi, if it's not Wi-Fi, you just use the internet. Unfortunately, when it's not working, you're going to start debugging to see if the internet really works before uh, opening a page. So yeah, like I mentioned, you should just see that there is there the, the website, the pages, the addresses that you exchange, and in our case will be one-liner URL. We started using it with ILP, but it can be a different implementation. As I mentioned, this is open source and it's not ruled by us, it's stewarded by us. So it could be something else in the future. If you are familiar with the work of W3C, you will see it on their GitHub, the web monetization. It says for working uh, community group, internalization, and Web monetization, it's open for everyone to contribute. Those data there with the watch, fork, and stars are not updated. It's higher a bit, but I forgot to update the slide. Happens all the time. If you want to get involved, I put on the left side the Slack that we have. It's an open community you can join. There are a lot of other entities besides the employees from Interledger. Many of the Fediverse world are involved over there. We're going to launch some publishers that we support early this autumn. I know here is already autumn, but we come from the south a bit, so it's not there yet. Uh, or will be, hopefully will be pages that you use or content creator publishers that you already follow. If you want to do it yourself, we can generate your link and you can add it and see how it's going. On the left side is the QR code for the GitHub of uh, web monetization working group or working draft that we have with the W3C. And yeah, thanks for joining me in this talk. I wanted to make it a bit short because may the four be with you. I know it's hungriness time. The QR code will take you to a page with all this information. I'm more than happy to do, talk with you more downstairs at the booth. Come join. We also have cute swag. I think I hear some clickers in the room. I'm sorry I ruined your day with those. It's my fault on that. Have a great lunch, and thanks so much. Big thank you to the translator.